Hurricane Lean is building strength at this hour as it barrels toward Florida. The, the effects of it are already being felt. However, the eye will not hit the coast for another few hours, but the impacts are far reaching. Florida to Georgia, even South Carolina, because this storm is massive, huge, the width and breadth of this storm. Florida's entire west coast is at risk of life-threatening storm surge, and in some areas, that storm surge could reach 20 feet. People in Cedar Key, Florida, are having really the worst luck of anyone. They are predicted to get hit pretty hard there. Their third storm, in fact, in just over a year. The small town was hit pretty hard by Hurricane Idalia in 2023, then Tropical Storm Debbie a month ago, and then now Hurricane Helene is coming that way. They're under a mandatory evacuation order, and a fire also ruined several downtown buildings. They've just had horrible luck. A storm surge could push much of that wreckage also into town. The Panhandle of Florida now bracing for landfall as Hurricane Helene is heading towards that Big Bend region. Strong winds and flooding expected across the southeast in the next 24 hours. Fox's Caroline Elliott joins us live from Valdosta, uh, Valdosta Georgia with the latest on this. Caroline. And John, Ellen, as we get closer to landfall tonight, there's a lot of nerves and a lot of anxiety in this area as we get closer because this region, as you guys mentioned, could look drastically different come sunrise tomorrow. Now, of course, the biggest concern going into tonight is the wind and that storm surge that is now being described as unsurvivable from emergency management officials. Of course, right now, we are about 80 miles away from the coast, but even 80 80 miles out, more inland, we're prepping for some severe damage overnight. We know in this area, they're getting ready for major flooding, winds of up to 100 miles per hour. And in the last couple minutes, the city of Aldosta started a citywide curfew telling everyone here to shelter in place. They're also warning anyone who lives in a mobile home to get out and find a better place. Because again, because of the flooding and the winds we are expecting here overnight, they said that that is not a safe place to ride out this storm. And now we do know that a lot of businesses here and a lot of people who live here have been taking those precautions. So it sounds like people are preparing the way they should, but this area is certainly could look drastically different tomorrow. John, so are Ellen. you are you going to be on the move tomorrow or are you sticking around there or where do you think you'll be heading? Yeah, John, that's something that we're going to have to decide tomorrow. Of course, the biggest concern, right, is these power lines can come down. This area has already been soaked with storms over the last 24 hours, so trees are really in prime conditions to topple over right now. So if road conditions allow it, we will be on the move. Uh, to check on residents, as again, just 24 hours after this storm has passed, but again, uh, this area could look very, very different tomorrow. We'll try to bring you those conditions here live. Yeah, that's the hard part. We've been talking about, you know, darkness now, and yeah. you just have no idea what the day will bring. So be safe out there, Caroline Elliott. We, we of course, want you to be safe and, and check in with us tomorrow. Yeah. Thank you, Caroline. An update on a bizarre case of voyeurism that we first brought you last night. A man is behind bars accused of recording images of women's feet at a Gilbert car wash. And new at four, we are now hearing from one of the alleged victims. Fox 10's Mark Martinez is here with more. Mark. Well, John and Ellen, court documents allege 28-year-old Jesse Johnson of Chandler was seen crawling under three women's cars at the Superstar Car Wash in Gilbert, where police say he would hide out there for several minutes, looking at and possibly recording their feet. It's something Johnson has been arrested for before in Nebraska in 2016 and 2017. Johnson told law enforcement at that time that he's sexually attracted to women's feet and that he sometimes cannot control his sexual desires regarding this. On August 29th, employees at that superstar car wash at Emmett and Riggs Roads, they say Johnson got his car washed three times that day and he would park next to women who were vacuuming their SUVs. And through surveillance video and working with Gilbert police, the employees had a partial plate and they were able to keep a lookout when Johnson came back. And that's how police were eventually able to track him down and arrest him. One of Johnson's alleged victims at that car wash that day with her young son, she says that she is relieved to find out he has been caught. I couldn't believe it. 
I couldn't believe that I was I was in this situation. I was fresh. I just had a baby two weeks prior to this. Um, I have two other kids. It was a very scary situation, especially with my um, my little boy with me when it happened. I guess this is just a really good reminder um, just to make sure that you're always looking around, keeping your kids close because you just never know um, what can be happening uh, around you. And one thing she told us is one thing that she had in common with the other alleged victims here is that they were all wearing flip-flops at the time. Here's Johnson making his first court appearance yesterday morning, facing three counts, felony counts of voyeurism and three misdemeanors for disorderly conduct. A judge set a $10,000 bond here, and if he posts bond and is released, he will have to wear an ankle monitor. Now, the woman, Chanel, that we heard from says it was actually a good Samaritan who followed her from the car wash to let her know that there was someone under her car. She didn't even know about it at the time. She does want to thank that man, or else she says she would likely would have never gone back to the car wash to ask for that surveillance video, would have never known that the suspect had been there, and she says it's likely he would not have been caught. In studio, Mark Martinez, Fox 10 News. A child in Gilbert is back home from the hospital after being bitten by a rattlesnake. Fox 10's Nicole Christine met that seven-year-old girl and her family today and is live with her story. Nicole. Well, good afternoon, guys. It was here at Phoenix Children's Hospital that Allie Brassfield's family finally learned she'd been bitten by a rattlesnake. But they say before that, they were sent home from two medical centers, and they stayed persistent. They said they're glad that they did. We didn't see a snake. We didn't hear a snake. There's no you know, puncture wound. When Allie Brassfield tripped and fell during a family run last week near Gilbert Regional Park, her family didn't initially think much of it. She just got back up and finished running home, complained of some ankle um, pain, a little bit of swelling, and about an hour later started throwing up. Allie's parents took her to multiple emergency rooms with no solid diagnosis before Phoenix Children's Hospital determined she'd been bit by a rattlesnake. From the time she was bit until um, her first dose of antivenom was 30 hours. She had to have emergent surgery on Wednesday, um, an emergent fasciotomy and blood transfusions. And then she's had the 40 vials of antivenom. Allie's back home now, but can't walk until she has a third surgery on Monday. She can't straighten her knee out yet, and then her foot is a little bit dropping forward. The family is counting down the days until Allie can get back to jujitsu, wrestling, and her current favorite. Your favorite one. More time. But more than anything, Allie's parents are just glad she's okay. A week ago, we didn't even know if she was going to be alive. You know, we went to three ERs in 24 hours. She has a long road with the physical therapy and her next surgery on Monday, but she's making good progress. And according to Arizona Fish and Game, rattlesnake season lasts into October here in Arizona. Reporting live in Phoenix, Nicole Christine, Fox 10 News.